He arrives in the port, unhurried in soft soles, looking around and smiling at everything he sees, like someone returning home from a long journey. He looks easy in his clothes, wears a cap and sunglasses, carries a green typewriter and a smart leather suitcase, a guitar strapped to his back. Janie and Edie skip beside him in tight pedal pushers and striped sailor shirts, clearly ecstatic to have met such an interesting new friend on the boat back from Athens. I narrow my eyes as they dance attendance on the approaching stranger. I've grown possessive of the island, as bad as the oldsters out here on the cobbles, with our judgment as bitter as Nikos Katsikas' coffee beneath its sugar. Janie and Edie lead the newcomer to our table, like sirens overjoyed by a lucky catch. Leonard is courteous, pulls off his cap. His hair is thick and wavy, his brow dark and serious. His grin is lopsided. There's something charming in the stoop of his shoulders, a carapace of shyness, perhaps. But as he says his hellos, his voice is as deep and confident as that of a village elder. Charmian welcomes him with the full force of her smile, sends Patrick scurrying for a chair. It isn't only the newcomer's voice that commands attention. Dark stubble and good manners make him seem older than 25. He lights a cigarette and hands it to Charmian, as you might to a long-acquainted friend, lights another for himself. He leans back and runs his hand back and forth along his jaw, says his last shave had been at his digs in Hampstead. The writers pull their chairs closer when they hear that he's a published poet. They are devils at a feast, tightening the circle as he talks of a little room where he might finish blackening the pages of a novel. The materials are very beautiful everywhere you look. Nothing insults you, he's saying as Edie and Janie snake around. Mm -hmm.